Hello everyone, uh, Margaret Fago here. Um, my regular students will have known my name and face, but I thought this time I would add a face to the videos. Um, what I am going to be talking about over the next three lessons is reflections. Um, reflections are a way of light moving around and how they bounce off of things, uh, how they turn, um, you know, hit something and come back again. Um, so let's just go ahead and get down to the images and we can work with that. So I'm going to switch my camera and we will move into the others. So when we look at something, um, I, you know, we're looking straight onto it, but if that something happens to be sitting or sitting next to a reflective surface, then we will not only see the object, but a reflection of the object. And so I have to start with a picture of a sailboat sitting on near calm water, but there's a little bit of wave action that runs through it, which then disturbs the reflection and breaks it up into pieces. And so what we we see is the part of the wave that's facing toward us and what we don't see is the part that's away from us and so that's why we see this broken part now if we're looking into a mirror um, we see uh, almost a complete uh, very uh, close replica of what the original was but because we're pretty close to it we see the side of the object the mirror sees into the underside of that object a little bit. So you're seeing more of underneath of the uh, throat of this little uh, um, ceramic bird. Um, but the other thing that we need to be aware of is that the reflection of the object goes straight down and then we see that. So we see it as a straight underneath of that piece, not off to one side, and it's the opposite. So this wing goes this way, that wing goes this way. Uh, we can see underneath of there, and if we were to drop a line underneath of here, it would go straight down. Now, if we look at this very slightly differently, so when I took the photograph of this bird, I was looking from the side of it, from the uh, the left side across through that bird. And we still have everything that we see there directly underneath. And then straight on, I once again, we see the object, we see a little bit underneath. We don't see an exact replica. It's not folded right in half um, because we are relatively close to it. Now the further away we get, the more we get almost the same thing in the reflection. You can see it in this boat here on the, the shiny, the, the light side, that that's almost the same uh, down below. And if that didn't have any waves in the water, it would be pretty close to the same because we're seeing it from so far away that uh, what we see on the water is very much the same of what's up above. Uh, and then my fourth one here, so we're moving across, I took three pictures of this from three different angles just to sort of make this point that as we change our view, the reflection changes its view as well, but it remains directly underneath of there. And so let's just look at that a little bit more closely, because this is one of the things that when we're doing reflections, we have a tendency to think they're shadows. And when we see shadows, the light, there's a shadow actually right back here. Um, so a shadow is where the light isn't, where the sunlight hits something and then this blocks the sunlight. So that is affecting the direction that the shadow runs. But the reflection is purely what we are seeing in this uh, reflective surface. And so the picture, the uh, image here is being dropped straight down into the glass and then coming at an angle to us. So it angles to us. And so what happens is that if you were to draw a line directly from his beak down in through here, it's gonna come down to the beak there. If you draw a line from the front of his wing down in here, it'll run right through the front of his wing there. And same with those eyes. It, the eyes wrap around the head just a little bit, so they get shifted very slightly, but basically they are the same. So if I draw, draw a line 
from here straight down, it's going to find the back of that eye. And even on these little, this mirror has a little edge on it with some, uh, some little cupids sitting on the edge. And so even on those, when I drop that line down, draw out of that, uh, straight off of the knee, straight off of the elbow, straight off the top of the head, that all ends up right underneath of the pieces that we see up above. Um, so keeping that in mind, we're going to, I made a slightly nicer picture of this to work from. We're not going to spend a lot of time making this super fancy, but I want to draw this on here. Um, and so I'm going to draw the positive image first and then draw the negative image. The other thing to think about is on this mirror, because of the angle that I'm looking at it, this reflection is actually a little bit shorter than the object. But I'm going to show you guys some pictures later, and, and even that sailboat, pull that sailboat back in here, um, the height of that mast and what's happening down below, the reflection actually goes longer than what that mast is because I'm further away from it and it can sort of move down through those waves and come at me and come right to me. Uh, so it can come all the way across a section uh, if you're quite a ways away from it. And, and then it's starting to move a little bit in the water. So back to this. So we're gonna just do a quick drawing of the bird. Move it off to the side here. I've got a little stand here. I'm going to put it on this little stand. I think that'll work out all right. Although I might, you know, I'm going to have to lay it flat because the angle that I see it from the stand looks different than what I'm seeing it from what I'm showing you guys. So the bird here. He's just a simple little bird made by a friend called Barbara Burrs. Um, she has unfortunately since passed away, but she did this incredible um, uh, pottery uh, ceramic pieces that were just whimsical and fun. And I love this little bird. I keep him with my Alaska. Let's see, that white goes right there. And then his belly, let's see, actually that belly needed to come out here. Let's see, the belly comes out a little further, wraps in under the side of this, and then he has some little feet that come out here. Now, I have to be thinking directly underneath of here, directly underneath of here, and actually that, well, never mind. Um, just for this actually doesn't stick out quite as far as his beak does, so I'm just going to bring that in just a little bit so that it's not quite so strong there. This is a soft white eraser that I'm using. And then right underneath of here, this repeats. And this comes around, and let's see, his wing is in here. His beak, I'm going to just sort of lightly do these lines so I can erase them quite easily later. His head is a little smaller down here in the reflection. And let's see, what did we say it was about? Uh, so the top of his head is going to be about here. Ooh, back of his head, I need to get that lined up too. So that's the back of his head right there. And then this is going to come down. And those are his feet, wrap around, it comes down into there. I mean, if I was, um, I could have done this drawing on another piece of paper and brought it back into here with graphite transfer um, paper and traced it in if I was feeling uncomfortable about being able to get this, uh, let's see, that goes a little bit lower there. Uh, get this drawing accurate to start with because I don't want to redraw it a couple of times on my watercolor paper. Um, I want just a few light erasures and that's it. So there's my guy. And then um, I, the mirror, let's just 
make this mirror as simple as possible. It doesn't have to be anywhere near as fancy. My piece was square up there so that it doesn't come all the way to this edge. I could spend a lot of time on doing this drawing, but I'm not going to because it's not important. The important thing is this bird and how he reflects. But I do sort of like what's happening with this other little figure here and how he also, he, she, it, I think uh, what cupids have no real uh, gender. They're just cute little, little, little guys. This was a mirror that my father gave me, probably for Valentine's or birthday years and years ago. I've kept it. It's been one of those fun things that uh, is nice to have around. And then the reflection underneath doo -doo -doo, has to come there. This arm, let's see that head. There's the head. It's got to fit in that. This guy's on this. Okay, there we go. Put the head up there just a little bit, Margaret. And bring those arms down. And then you've got some dark things in there. So, And then these are just sort of flowers. But which also have little reflections. Let's just leave it at that much detail and not worry beyond there. So now, as I'm painting this and thinking about this, I'm going to be repeating information that I see down here. And when, you're, when you've got a mirror like this, your reflection is very, very close to the original. When we get onto water, our reflection is not going to be as dark or as light or as dark as what's up above. But when we've got a mirror reflection, it's almost a pure reflection. So we get almost exactly the same image that we saw up above down below, but from a slightly different angle. Okay, so now let's think about how we're going to paint this. Um, I've got a greenish mixture here. It's a blue-green on the back of that uh, guy. I'm going to add a little bit of phthalo, a little bit of phthalo into this uh, slightly dull green that I already had, which is going to become our bird here. Now we do have a little bit of what we call shape shadow on this bird. The lighting is coming in from the um, the left side here and so it is going to be a little bit darker um, back in behind. I could almost use a touch more blue in it. Be careful with Thalo. Thalo gets in there pretty strong pretty fast. Uh, I'm going to lighten this front side here in just a minute. Let's, but I got to paint around that eye so that we can get the shape of that eye in there. And I'm just putting this down just a little bit darker than what it's going to be in the end uh, on the light side, but about right for the back side, for the dark shadow side. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to pick a little bit of that up to lighten it. There's a uh, an interesting texture in the. Um, uh, what do I want to say? Um, okay, let me just pick this up. Sometimes it's hard to talk and think at the same time. Uh, dry. I rinsed my brush, dry my brush halfway, and now we're going to go ahead and pick up this side. Make that just a little bit lighter. Make this a little bit lighter across the forehead, around back behind that eye. So then this is starting to give it some rounded shape because we have this variation in the light and dark. Now when we get down to doing the bottom, let's just go ahead and do that green down in the bottom as well. Um, and we are going to have a thing where it gets darker underneath of here. I may need to go even a little darker than what I had. Where it was in the shadow underneath of there. 
hopefully I'm not getting my head into this and you guys are seeing it okay. Sometimes it's fun to mix the paint on the page. Um, I was sort of happy to be able to mix those two together and ooh, I'm seeing a little greenness on this foot here. I must have seen some green coming down in that foot too. So let's just do those together. I'm going to come back and do that blue. And this can come out just a wee hair further, but not much. Ooh, and I didn't actually draw that eye in, and I need to save it. So Sometimes reflections seem boring just because it's sort of this one thing repeated uh, underneath of the other. And other times I find that very exciting, how that works. And let's just... And this comes out just a wee touch more right there. And now this is going to be a little bit lighter right... I just rinsed my brush and dried it. It's going to be a little bit lighter right on this front edge of that wing. Because that's where the light's coming in. And then it makes it look rounded. And once again, up here on the head, or should that just go darker? I'm going to come in with a little bit more dark right in on top of what I just did. This is still a little bit damp, and so it's going to make it a little uneven where it hits the other uh, somewhat damp. But I think I'm going to like that. I'm going to just sort of dry brush that across through there to get some of that feeling of what that um, texture of the uh, clay was. And then the same thing down here. Let's get this a little darker. And do we care if this has hard edges? No, I'm going to say it doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to come in with a blue. This blue looks pretty much straight cobalt blue. So I'm going to just use the cobalt blue directly out of my pan. And I should be leaving some highlights behind. So let's just dry brush a little bit. I've got a really thick amount of cobalt blue on my brush, almost too much. But I'm going to let it bleed into there. Take it back in here. And then we're going to do the same down in here. And try and leave some light spaces behind. Bring it right in on top of some of this. And then it's going to come up to that white throat. So there, we've repeated the one piece down into the other. My next color in this is going to be sort of a yellow tan. And I'm thinking, hmm, which color do I want to use with this? Let's quinacridone gold. I've got a little bit of yellow mixed up in here from another painting that uh, might have been Aurelian yellow, but I'm going to put quite anchored on gold in on top of there. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of burnt sienna to it to brown it down slightly more. Yeah, that's going to probably be pretty good. Let's just try it over in a corner here. Yeah, and when I thin that more, I think it's going to be just about right. Now this is drying a fair amount, um, so I think I can come in and paint here without causing a problem. I'm going to have to leave a little bit of a space between that blue and his beak. And the eye has yellow in it as well, and then that's a little bit too dark, so let's just rinse my brush, dried it halfway. If I dry it too much, then I can't get things to move, and if I don't dry it enough, then it's going to introduce water. So I want that little sweet spot uh, where 
So just making that into a grade and lightening this a little bit in the process. And while I've got that light color on my brush, let's just bring it right down in here into this reflected area by his feet. And then we're gonna do the same thing under here, although the darkest part is up in this region. And the eyeball has to get a little bit. This is sort of fun. Just I'm just doing it sort of simple. Don't want to have it too fancy, um, and not spending a huge amount of time on it. But I, what I'm thinking about as I'm doing this is how this is reflecting down into there, and we're getting almost the same image. And now let's just come in with an almost dry brush if I have any water at all, it's going to push back into that other area. But if I come in with an almost dry brush, I can pick up the edge of that dampness and bring it across into here. And same with that. And maybe we're going to soften that just a wee touch. I'm not trying to be absolutely exact. Now, to come in with a little bit darker, uh, it's going to have to dry before I can really get the super dark bits on there. But let's let's do another thing. I feel like I, I should lighten this just a little bit. Once again, my brush is three quarters dry. So it's just a very lightly damp brush. And I'm picking up a little bit of this paint on his chest here, following the lines of his shape. And then we'll do just a little bit down in here. This way I'm not introducing extra water in, because if I do, and I, it may happen anyway because this is still a little bit damp, it'll push away the paint that was there. But if I, my brush is almost dry, it will just pick up some paint. Once this is totally dry, we'll come back in with black and do the black lines that are in there. Uh, but I think we're getting this pretty close. Now, what I wanted to do was just a little bit of the dark work out in here on that reflection part. And that is sort of a goldy brown. Well, let's start with the um, um, quinacridone gold. And we're going to add more burnt sienna to it. So it's still in the slightly yellow side. And then to that, I'm going to add blue. So I'm putting all three of my colors together to make a gray, but I want it to be sort of a yellowy gray, if that makes sense. A little more quinacridone gold in there, a little more blue. And, you know, the balance is going to move from green to brown to gray to gold, and depending on how much you have of the various different colors in there. I think this is going to be pretty close. So we have this reflection down in here, and at this point I'm going to paint the reflection. It's going to come up right beside this little figure. And then this reflection comes down and it's a little leg. The leg comes to a body, which comes to an arm, which moves across, and there's another arm there, and then the head. And then we continue on up into right behind these flowers. And we'll do a little bit of this just on this other side too, just sort of to tie that together and sort of it's telling us that there's something going on here. Now, let me get a slightly smaller brush and maybe I can do just a little bit of work on that figure. So there's a shadow, form shadow, form shadow on the side of this little figure. Under its little belly. And 
There's some gold light on the side. Whoops, too dark. Put it down, lift it off. That goes there. And then there's just some bits and pieces for these flowers. There's some, I'm just looking at sort of shapes and where those dark places are. Not trying to get any exact flowers, but just getting some shapes of that and leaving it at that because I don't really want to have a lot of that going on in there. I'm going to take this back in here and then it needs to go just a wee touch darker. So now we can turn this brown into a black by adding more blue to it, making thicker paint, add a little more burnt sienna in there. Hopefully you can see where I'm mixing this. And then just in right at that intersection between the glass and the rim is a dark shadow area. And this happens on water quite often, right at that little intersection. And that's going to help make this look like it's a reflection. And so the same with our little guy here. There's a little dark line right in here. It's going to come around. And it's dark right back in there. And then the little toe marks. It's a little bit darker underneath of here. Let me just thin this out and get some of that brown in there. I need to grade this out just a little bit more. And Let's just get a little more turquoisey blue right back in here. Careful about how dark you get it, Margaret. That's too dark. Rinsed my brush, dried my brush. And now I'm spreading it around a little bit. And then we just have a hint of that showing on this side of here, but we need to have some dark pieces that are going to be the same as these toes, but they actually move over slightly because of where the reflection is. And then he's got a dark line on his beak. And a dark line, just like Egyptian paintings, isn't that? Reminds me a lot of Egyptian paintings. Bring that up into that green. And a dark pupil. And that dark pupil goes right up into that top eyelid. And then we've got to do the same thing down here. But down here, instead of that going up, it goes down. So it wraps through here and goes down. And then the eyes go downward on that. Good. I'm gonna get that to wrap around this corner just a tiny bit more. And let's put just a little bit of dark right in here. And then I think we have this little guy done. Oh, nostril. Do I want this darker? I think he looks pretty good. You know, he's pretty simple. I haven't gotten him nearly as detailed as what the original was, but that is A-OK. -okay. And we'll just do a little bit of this flower work back here. I'm just sort of looking at representative dark pieces, and I'm not trying to duplicate any of those flowers. I just want to get sort of a representative feeling of what's going on there. Some of those actually stick out just a little bit more here. I think 
that's got it. So, uh, yeah, um, I mean, if I were to bring in some more of the stuff from the background that might look a little more like reflection, but at this point, I'm not worried about that. I mean, I, I might, it's just one little thing that might be, uh, might help pull this together a little bit, and that is to put just a hair of this shadow back here. Let's soften the edges of it. Bring it in right next to there, because that's going to make that look lighter. So that's his little shadow back there. And then there's a little shadow right in here. Now, what I'm accomplishing with this shadow uh, is now I can see the light spots on the um, reflection that you wouldn't see otherwise. And once again, let's leave it at that, unless we want, oh, Margaret, do you want to? Uh, if I want this to look even lighter here on this front edge, I need to have it slightly darker in this area, but I'm not sure I want to do that. It would allow, no, that's actually darker than the piece behind it, so I'm going to just leave it at that, okay? So we're going to go ahead and stop here, and um, yeah, if you've got any questions, Holler. I will be giving you this photograph to play with. Um, so this is um, a reflection on a very smooth, glassy, mirror-like surface that really throws back almost all of the light that has hit the figure and hit the glass is coming back at our eyes. And so our reflection is very close to being the same colors, the same values as the piece that's being reflected. Um, but because we are fairly close to it, we get a slightly different view in the reflection than what we did in the original. So we get to see up under his chin just a little bit. We get to see up under his feet just a little. We get to see underneath of this back wing just a little bit. Um, so that's what happens in a mirror-like glassy um, reflection.